Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Thanks so much for joining me, everybody. This is a great talk we're going to have today. The only way I learned about Medicare was through talking to podcast guests, and that's what we're going to be doing today. I have Al Kushner from Real Easy Medicare, and he's going to run down the 10 10 most costly mistakes we can make with our Medicare choices. And I know as a family caregiver who is not yet Medicare age, I probably made all 10. So thanks for joining me, Al. Sure. Glad to be here. So why don't you, why don't you uh, give us your background? Do you have do you have any family members that have had any form of dementia? Well, um, none that you know come to mind. Uh, but you know, mental illness is something uh, that has been uh, part uh, in my family. You know, depression and uh, other things. So these are things that I'm very much aware of and uh, understand. So that's why um, I understand what uh, Medicare's role in this uh, area and how people could uh, understand better their options because um, it could be expensive and you need a way to contain the cost. So that's why Medicare does provide at least some benefit for that. So hopefully people will get a value of what we talk about. So that would be Oh, I'm, I'm sure they will. So as I mentioned, I think it was back in 2019, I talked to another company that specializes in only Medicare um, policies and they they educated me fully on medicare which was great because it was right before open enrollment and i knew i had answers to the questions that i needed for making my mom's decisions so i'm certain that uh we'll, we'll accomplish mm-hmm. that as well today sure. so why don't you tell us about real easy medicare thank you for mm-hmm. having an easy name i can remember <laughs> yeah yeah, really easy, Medicare.com. So we provide education information to individuals who are uh, first um, being come eligible for Medicare. I would say majority of the people are turning 65. I would say probably in the U.S. alone, there's anywhere from 10 to maybe even 20,000 people turn 65 each and every day. And a lot of them are unaware of uh, their options when it comes to Medicare. Sometimes they're just, you know, inundated with so much information and bombarded with mails and calls and other things. So we kind of help people understand that. And and that's why I I wrote the book, um, which is Virtual Medicare, uh, 10 Costly Mistakes That You Can't Afford to Make. And this is available on Amazon and other avenues. It's in paperback and audio. And the important thing is to uh, provide people information so they can make informed choices. And that's really uh, a key when it comes to understanding Medicare and their uh, options, because it could be quite daunting, I would say, uh, when getting started with it. So, Especially, yeah. there's. I think there's more options than, like regular, for lack of a better term, healthcare plans. Like we have an option of two or three, and then with Medicare, mm-hmm. you've got a whole bunch of Medicare Advantage plans. I think you can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, the Advantage plans are also supplement plans, so uh, there are differences uh, when looking at um, what's available. So, uh, and then there are people who just go straight to Medicare only. You know, so we'll explore that uh, and see what is um, the best option for the for those individuals based on their circumstance. So, so why don't we start with? um, So you you can do just Medicare. I thought you had to do a supplemental plan, and there's supplemental plans and Medicare. I didn't even know there was a difference. So I guess you should start there and explain the difference, not necessarily between the three, because I think we all kind of understand Medicare. But maybe yeah. touch on what it does and what it doesn't do and why you might or might not need other plans. Okay. Well, uh, Medicare kind of consists of uh, different parts. There's usually four parts all together, part A, B, C, and D. Part A is your hospitalization. Uh, part B is your doctors. Uh, part C is considered Medicare Advantage plans. And then part D is your prescription drug plan. So when you uh, first are eligible... For coverage, uh, usually you'll get Part A uh, automatically, and it depends on your work record. Uh, usually it's free for most people. Uh, usually requires 10 years or more of work history or quarters in order to qualify for Part A. And Part B is your uh, doctors, and that usually is subject to a premium based on also your income. 
So most people usually fall under a income. I think it's 97,000 for an individual and maybe 130 for a couple uh, where they'll qualify for the minimum amount of payment that's needed. And right now this year, it's about 164.50 per month is what uh, the Part B premium would be. And then <clears throat> you can either apply for a uh, advantage plan or a supplement and we can talk about the differences and, and what's the best option as well. So, uh, and, uh, and that's kind of where it's at, you know, so hopefully that'll give you an overview. That was a good overview so far. That sounds pretty basic. So, um, the Medicare advantage plans, you said that's part C. Why don't we go yeah. into that a little bit? <clears throat> sure. That was originally created, I believe, back in 2006, um, up until that time when there was only Medicare supplements. So this was a fairly new um, idea that the government came up with because they realized that there were a lot of uh, situations where supplements could be expensive. And that is a separate cost for that. So when someone applies for a supplement plan, the advantage of supplements right now is that you can go to any doctor or any hospital. And no restrictions. So that is a great thing. So, and um, the um, yeah, obviously, the advantage, of course, is that you have that flexibility of going anywhere within the continental U.S. and I believe Puerto Rico as well. So you have to look at that as uh, a good thing. The drawback, of course, is the cost associated with that. Usually, the cost would be depending on the individual's age, and also when they qualify for it. So when you get on the program at age 65, you are guaranteed to be accepted by any Medicare supplement company. Uh, and that's important because um, if someone has pre-existing conditions, a lot of companies will deny them. But this is the only time that you're eligible to qualify for that, where they don't require any medical examinations or questions. They must accept you by law. So that is a great thing to have. But again, it's only a one-time situation. So you take advantage of it when you can. Uh, and then um, the amount of cost will be depending where you're located, your state, and the plans that you choose from. Their plans ranging from A to G. Uh, and those things are talked about in my book. But uh, most people go with Plan G, which covers you know both hospital and doctors. It fills in the gaps that Medicare doesn't cover. When it comes to Part B premiums, they cover 80% on traditional uh, Medicare, but 20% you're responsible for. So the Medicare supplements takes that 20%. So if your bill is $100,000 with straight Medicare only, you're looking at $20,000 you have to pay. With the supplement, that takes care of that cost. If your bill is a million dollars, that's 200,000, it'll pay for that cost. You know, that's not uncommon, you know, it happens. And people can get cancer or other types of conditions can run into hundreds of thousands of dollars the Medicare supplement covers that cost of it. So that really has an advantage because of the fact that <clears throat> it gives you any doctor, any hospital, any possible treatment that's needed. And it fills in the gaps that Medicare doesn't cover. So it really is something that supplements that particular type of program. So that's what supplements do. With an Advantage plan, there is no premium involved, which is great. And they usually cover additional things that supplements don't cover, like dental or optical vision, um, gym memberships are included, sometimes over-the-counter medicine. I do, depending on the state you were living in, they have a lot of more richer benefits overall. And that could be substantial, particularly on dental, which can run thousands of dollars. There are plans that will cover a lot of the dental work that's needed. A lot of seniors are facing these, uh, you know, they get good crowns or bridges. I mean, that's expensive. So um, those plans cover for that aspect of it. So that makes it very attractive for people to consider the Advantage plans. Um, there are a lot of great companies that offer these plans, um, and you can use it throughout the U.S., and sometimes they may even uh, give you international benefits as well, you know, depending for emergency situations. And it also covers emergency within the U.S. as well. The drawback of those plans, of course, you have to work with participating doctors and hospitals. So again, a lot of them are participating, but there are some that may not. So this is something to look at. And depending on what your situation is, if you travel a lot, sometimes that may be not a good thing because, again, only covers for emergency situations. When it comes to routine, as long as you're within your network, within your state, you're covered for it. And you pay usually there'd be either um, 
you know, a copay associated with that. It could be a zero copay for primary, a specialist, maybe $25, depending on the plan, it all varies. You know, so what's great about it, you don't have any claim forms to fill out. You show them your card, you walk in, they provide, you know, the care that's that's needed. So it includes blood tests, laboratory exams, and what have you. So it, it's quite comprehensive, and a lot of people benefit because they save on the premiums, and if the doctor's in network, even better. So it really has a lot of great um, possibilities. So that's kind of an overview between a supplement and a, um, you know, advantage plan. So, yeah. So to kind of clarify a little bit on the supplement plans. So my maternal grandparents, this is, this is way back in the old days in 1985, sold their home and packed up their 35 foot fifth wheel trailer and traveled all over the continental United States and a little bit into Canada and Mexico. Now they didn't obviously have supplemental plans back then. Um, it was a challenge. They'd have to come home back to California for the summer visit with the grandkids and all that good stuff. And that's when like my mom knowing when they'd come home would make doctor's appointments and everything. Um, but if they had had an emergency, something tells me if they were back in your neck of the woods, New York and Florida, they might've been in trouble financially because they just have to somehow get back to their network of doctors. Is that something, a situation where a supplement plan would be a wise choice? Well, back in 1985 <laughs> is when you're talking about, that well, was the only did. choice. Right. But if they, if they were doing that now. Well, then they would look at, um, if it was a supplement, it would be any doctor, any hospital. So it doesn't matter. Uh, so that would be fine. Again, if it's an emergency situation, uh, the Advantage plans will cover that uh, purpose for emergencies only. So it just depends on, you know, if you travel frequently, you know, that may be, you know, something you may want to look at more leaning towards a supplement. If you have a very high income, you may also look at that because some people like going to any doctor, any hospital. If you want a specialist, you know, you, you can go and, and, and without thinking about it, just get treatment. And that's really a great thing. So it just depends on your situation. Everybody's Makes different. Sense. Boy, it'd be really nice if we had that option across the board, but that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> we won't dive into that one today. So what what are some, let's dive into the costly mistakes that people make. Obviously, I've just learned the difference between the supplemental plans and the advantage plans. So that's a benefit. But what else, what what mistakes are people making that you, you can help them avoid with your... Uh, with this talk, and then Al also has a YouTube channel we're going to link in the show notes, and his book also be linked. But for today's purposes, what should be we what should we be looking out for? See if I can speak. <laughs> well, the important thing is that if you become eligible, don't delay. A lot of people procrastinate, and that's a big problem. And if you are turning sixty-five, you only have a certain window of time to you know apply for benefits. That's usually, and again, if you are in a situation, if you're working, currently working in a group that uh, has 20 or more employees, then you can continue with your group plan. You're not required to uh, get Medicare at that time since you are covered under a group plan. And you can continue with that plan if you are finding it to be satisfactory. But also take a look at the options on the group plan because some of them can be expensive. There's a cost usually associated with that. And sometimes the benefits are not as great as Medicare, you know, uh, itself. So that's something to really kind of look at. So, uh, but if you are working, let's say self-employed or under 20 employees, you have to uh, take Medicare. You just simply don't have a choice. And if you decide not to, you'll be penalized. Usually that's 10% every year that you decide not to go forward. And that's permanent. That doesn't change. So if you're 65 and age 70, you decide to get Medicare at that point, well, you'll be paying 50% more on the premiums because you failed to uh, take Medicare at the time that you're eligible for. Again, those for people who are self-employed or, or working less than 20 employees. So that's pretty substantial. So, and I have a situation right now where I have a prospect who earning a half million dollars a year, he works for himself, but you know, he's deciding if he wants to do it or not. You know, because of the uh, the Part B premiums are also expensive, because it's also based on income. So that individual, for example, his um, income is over half a million or greater. He'd be paying about five sixty a month for Part B, which still is not a lot, but 
nonetheless, it's an expense. Uh, that's, um, that's cheaper than what I'm paying right now. <laughs> right, exactly. But again, every individual is saying that, and I explained to him that if you delay it, you have penalties. That's permanent. It's not going to change. You know, and and that's something that they need to understand. And uh, some people are just procrastinating. So that's one of the top costly mistakes that could be uh, expensive. So that's something you got to really look at. Um, so you really have to understand your situation and also look at, you know, your health condition as well. You know, because if you have pre-existing conditions, sometimes that could be a challenge because a lot of the plans that are offered, sometimes medications may not be covered under that plan because they may fall into a different category. You know, someone taking cancer treatment or cancer medications are pretty expensive. So you have to evaluate the plans that are offered and see which one are accepting your particular medication. So that's why we review with clients that have uh, pre-existing conditions and make sure the plans are accepting their particular uh, medications. Uh, that's important. If they're on pain medication in particular, like Percocet, um, most Medicare Advantage plans won't cover that cost. Or actually, they, they will cover it, but most supplement plans won't cover that because it falls into a certain category. So you really have to evaluate what medications are and which plan best suited for their situation. So that's just examples. Another example is failing to review your plan each year. Just because you got the plan last year doesn't necessarily mean it's good the following year. Okay. And that's pretty much an issue. A lot of times the uh, providers may fall out of the network. All of a sudden you're in January, all of a sudden your doctor's on the plan or you retired. What do you do? You know, then you got to look at what's who's accepting your plan. So you really need to review it each year. Make sure that it meets your standards, even with your parents' situation. You know, their plan may have changed. You know, providers on a network, or maybe their their premiums have gotten high in the supplement. You need to look at what's a better alternative. Maybe uh, an Advantage plan could be a better option. So those are things to look at. So a lot of times people really try to um, look on the internet and look for information. There's a lot of misinformation out there and they could be under some guys that they think that, you know, that they really don't really understand. You really need to speak to an independent uh, insurance agent or a broker who will help you work with all companies. A lot of them are working with agents who maybe represent only one or two companies and that's not to your advantage. So you need to have someone who's knowledgeable and also doesn't have any allegiance to any particular carrier, you know, and that's important because that may not be for their best um, circumstances. You know, you need to get, you know, information where it's subjective. So that's important and work with someone who's knowledgeable. You know, a lot of people go into this industry and they really don't know what they're talking about. Sometimes <laughs> the client knows more than the agent, you know, when they're talking with them. Uh, and um, so you really need to become familiar now. You know, knowledge is the key, you know, so read up on the information that's available. Medicare does provide a, a standard booklet called, I think, Medicare and You. They send it out each year, and um, but it's a really thick volume, and really it's sometimes it's, it's like a law book or something. It's so many words and things. You're really understandable. So that's why we made a book that's more user-friendly. So that makes it easier to read and people understand about it. We have videos also they can check out. So this is something that you want to become as knowledgeable as possible and don't, you know, leave it at the last moment, which a lot of people do. They procrastinate. They just simply don't think about it. So that's a really costly mistake. So that's just the tip of the iceberg. A lot of people probably procrastinate too, because just what you're talking about, it's like, oh my gosh, this just sounds... It sounds kind of daunting, like you're going to have to set aside some time to educate yourself and become knowledgeable, do your research. That just, that sounds like something to procrastinate on. And I'm not really a procrastinator, but now I know. So my husband will be 65, two years before me. So I can inform him, but he, he's, he's a real estate broker. So he's pretty good at, at using like, you know, we have an insurance broker. I don't think they do Medicare, but he would ask our current broker, who he should talk to. So he, as soon as he got that booklet, he'd be like, oh no, I'm going to call somebody. Because <laughs> he would procrastinate. And I had no idea that the there was a penalty and it was permanent. Because, you know, way back yeah. when the Affordable Care Act became law, you know, we're both self-employed and, you know, the premiums are a little bit ridiculous. And with the, you know, 08 housing crisis that happened and real estate was so much fun to be a part of at that point, 
Yeah, yeah. we went without it. For, it was cheaper to pay the penalty, <clears throat> and then it got not cheaper, and um, we got older. So it was like, well, we got to kind of do this, or else you know we're going to be in, you know, we could be in big trouble. So, <laughs> I, I would, yeah, exactly. I would almost think he wouldn't do that with Medicare. He's on um, a blood thinner, so he wouldn't play around with that game, but. I hate going to the doctor. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, oh, you postponed it a couple of years because you're healthy and everything's fine. But obviously that would be a really stupid mistake. So yeah. So and plus I, uh, you're, you're playing premiums now anyway, you know, it'll be much less than, you know, doing that, uh, you know, differently. So uh, again, you won't have a choice, but again, yeah, you'll be subject to those penalties if you don't take advantage of that. So that's something that you really have to look at as a uh, important, Aspect we kind of, of are planning. counting down the days until we're both on Medicare because the premiums are not pretty and we're not happy with what our, op, you know, just we've had a lot of issues with doctors and, yeah. uh, you know, the medical profession is a mess for many reasons. Patients yeah. are not always great. It's just the whole system is a mess. And so it'd be really nice not to pay top dollar for something we get bottom dollar service yeah. for. So I don't know how many people are like, yes, we can't wait till we're 65. <laughs> but, you know, sure. and the other reason I asked about the supplemental plans for people who'd like travel is we've talked about doing the same thing my maternal grandparents did is sell our house, pack up our trailer and however many golden retrievers we have at the time and head out on the road. Because I have not seen a lot of the 48 states. We're working on it, but I'm very okay. far behind. So my husband's from Staten Island kind of your neck of the, your your previous neck of the woods. So yeah. he's seen more of the country than I have, so I got to catch up. So that might be the only yeah. way to manage that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we're well, talking about doing again, that in, in about a decade, so we would be hitting well, the Medicare said, years. Now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. When I learned that despite eating as healthy as possible, we can still have undernourished brains, I was frustrated. I also live in a farming community, so I'm aware that our food isn't grown as well as we need. Learning about Neuro Reserves, Relevate, and how it's formulated to fix this problem convinced me to give them a try. Now I know many of you are skeptical, as was I. However, I know it's working because of one simple change. My sweet tooth is gone. I didn't expect that, and it's not something other users have commented on, but here's some truth. My brain always wanted something sweet. Now fruit usually did the trick, but not always. One bad night's sleep would fire up my sugar cravings so much they were almost impossible to ignore. You ever have your brain screaming for a donut? Well, for me, those days are gone. It's been about six months since I started taking the supplement and I have no regrets. I believe in my results so much that I'm passing on my 15% discount to you. Try it for two or three months and see if you have a miraculous sweet tooth cure or maybe just better focus and clarity. It's definitely worth a try. Now back to our conversation. Yeah, well, things may change at that point. So hopefully for the better, you know, that's what we look at. But um, it'll certainly be around, I believe, at that time. So that's a good thing because um, it is an essential part of, you know, uh, when seniors, you know, grow older they're always going to have more medical expenses and that's why the government steps in and helps out and that's really a great thing i think what's good about this country is that there are uh, affordable options available when turning 65 and medicare is certainly one of them and that's um that's awesome that's available to us so yeah okay Hopefully, so we don't uh, want to delay good. we don't want to procrastinate we want to make sure we check the plans every year because you just kind of mentioned it you know as we age we might need more coverage because we might have more medical needs. And then, I don't know, are we on three or four? <laughs> I don't remember what number we're on now, but I'll let well, you there continue. Also, yeah, there are also uh, situations like with Advantage plans, there are sometimes gaps in those plans itself that don't cover uh, particular uh, certain things. For example, when it comes to um, skilled nursing care, they cover most of the time up to the first 20 days, but from the 21st day to the 100th day, that's an out-of-pocket expense. And that can range anywhere from 180 to as much as $400 a day, depending on where you're located. So having a hospital indemnity plan um, to fill in that gap makes sense for a lot of people. And sometimes they, they don't want to listen to people. Uh, and they think, oh, well, man, my advantage plan will cover everything. But no, and they realize they can bill for it, you know, and it could be um, pretty substantial, you know, and 
that skilled nursing is something that um, is a uh, something lacking in those kind of uh, plans, advantage plans. Uh, supplements would cover that, obviously, but there's a premium associated with that. So you got to weigh out the options and see which one's better for you. So that's uh, important to look at. And um, there are a lot of other things I would say in terms of evaluating, you know, your options is to understand um, where you're going to be located, you know, because, uh, for example, in Florida, there are a lot more programs available, particularly in South Florida, because there's a lot of competition in San Francisco, not as much. So if you're planning on retiring and moving to another state like Florida, sometimes it could be your, to your advantage because of a lot of more com- competition. You know, that's really what helps uh, when it comes to these plans. More competition, uh, the better it is for the consumer. You know, um, I would say Arizona would probably also be a senior state as well that is competitive. So look at that when you're retiring. Is that where are you going to be located? You know, and that can make a difference in terms of you getting better coverage, you know, better benefits overall. So uh, that's could be substantial. So I would say that, you know, that's something to consider. And if you have a certain situation where you qualify, you know, where it could be a divorce or a uh, other life changing event, you have an opportunity to change plans at that time as well. So you're not never stuck with one plan, which is a good thing. So when you turn 65 and you with an advantage plan, it could be, I don't know, Humana, and next year you want to change to U.S. Healthcare or, or United, you can do that. Every year you have an opportunity to change it. In fact, twice a year, actually, you could change with uh, Advantage plans. You could change it as of January 1st of the, of the year. And then there's another open enrollment period from January 1st to March 31st. So you can actually have another chance to switch over to another Advantage plan if you find better benefits or not happy with the plan that you change. So you're never stuck with anything, which is a good thing. Um, also, the people who take a supplement plan, uh, and because uh, as you know, there's only one time you can do that without any type of health requirement. And if you decide you want to change into an Advantage plan, they give you a free trial up to uh, 12 months to try a Medicare Advantage plan. So if you decide you don't want it, you can always go back to your supplement plan, but you're not necessarily stuck with it. Like some people get a supplement plan, they may not decide they want to switch over. You can do that. They give a free trial. And if you like it, continue it. If you don't, within 12 months, you could change back to your regular supplement plan. So that's a good thing. So you're not stuck with these options. People don't know about it. And I have clients who didn't realize that they can do that because they're, they're afraid. They don't want to make some kind of big change because they think, well, you know. But a lot of times, the, it could be pretty substantial savings. I have a, a couple that are paying close to $600 a month for their supplement plan. And we switched them over to a advantage plan with a zero premium and they're loving it. Plus they get extra benefits like dental and optical care and, um, you know, um, physical therapy. I mean, they're getting treatments, then they're getting more than they have. And most the key thing is having most of their doctors in the plan. And if they're just pretty much staying within the state, they really are getting more of better benefits overall, which is a good thing. So um, they they like that option. So, but everybody's situation is different. But it could be substantial the savings. But so understand that you know you're never always stuck with one company. You know you can always change, and um, you should always review your plan each year because not doing it, you're doing a disadvantage for yourself. Again, going back to the same thing, reviewing is mostly important for for understanding better benefits. And that's, Sounds like that's Medicare. Key. Sorry, it sounds like Medicare is a little bit more consumer friendly than buying health care plans like we do now. Because one of our biggest issues is my husband's had the same doctor for 20 years. We moved almost two years ago. And to get treatment where we're at now, it's it's a joke. I mean, it's like we have to keep telling them, no, please read the address on your on your screen we're not two hours closer, you know, we're not two hours, we're two, you're, you're two hours away from us. It's just awful. And he doesn't want to change doctors. So it's always going to be this big headache until he decides he wants to change doctors. And then I'm lucky because I, every time I go to find a primary care physician, nobody's taking new patients. So I just get assigned to somebody, which is not bet. It's not much better, but I don't have to worry because I never have a doctor I want to keep, but it would be really nice. Um, last year, 2022, we had a, he had a situation where I think changing whole hospital plans would have been a really good idea, but 
you know, by the time we could do that, his situation was long over. So it's like I said, Medicare sounds a little more consumer friendly than, than I would have expected, you know, considering it's put on by the government. So that's, yeah, that's well, the, the government, one. um, you know, does, uh, pay a pretty, uh, large portion of, um, the premiums and the benefits to, um, the doctors, uh, who are participating. So, um, and then the insurance companies also receive benefits from the government in terms of when it comes to advantage plans. So there are a lot of um, extra perks that are involved compared to traditional health insurance uh, per se. So you really need to understand the differences. People think when they churn in Medicare, they're getting less benefits or not as good as benefits. And that's really a mistake, you know, uh, and some of them just continue with uh, Medicare on its own and not getting something to fill in the gaps. And that could be pretty costly, you know, so you really, really should evaluate that and take advantage of it. If you're eligible during that nine month window of time, because there won't be any medical questions asked during that time period, like it would be husband's case guaranteed he'll get, you know, um, you know, a plan, you know, which is awesome. You know, um, we can't say that now with a lot of the, insurance under 65 because there are um, you know requirements that are needed medical um, issues that come up that companies will stay away from so over here they're guaranteed so that's a great thing i think that's awesome so you really need to look at those options you know if you're going with a supplement plan you also need to get what's called part d which is a prescription drug plan prescription drug plan is required as part of that again if you don't do that you'll also be penalized as well so that again applies to people who are applying for supplements they need to get a part d for the prescriptions because that covers your prescription medications that's something that is important so if you're going that route always look at having that option available and their, their plans are pretty reasonable the cost range anywhere from 15 to 30 dollars a month you know depending on medications and depending on the plans and the zip code so you really kind of need to evaluate that so but um that's really a good thing to have knowledge of because people think well i'll just get a supplement i don't need the drug plan because i don't take prescriptions well guess what if you don't do it you're going to penalize for not doing it it's going to cost you so that's another costly mistake people need to understand in my book i talk about that you need to really kind of understand that this is not something the government is going to say that no you're not going to get away with it that's really important now people who are um, uh, income uh, is less than a certain amount there are benefits that are available to them depending on the state that they may qualify for. So if someone is on Medicaid, for example, uh, they are eligible for a more um, enhanced benefit plan with the Advantage plans. They provide a lot more richer features. Sometimes they'll provide a uh, food uh, allowance, for example, or even for rent, <laughs> they include that as part of that. So uh, Medicaid and Medicare together have a unique uh, combination that for people on low income, are eligible to get more richer benefits than they would through traditional Medicare. So that's something to evaluate. So we look at the person's income and determine if that's something that makes sense. And most of the time it does, particularly when it comes to um, extra benefits they're getting, which normally they wouldn't get if they didn't qualify for it. Uh, we talk about that in the book and how to apply for those benefits through the government. And if you're eligible, or it's actually a lot of states offer these plans as well, too. So your state they may qualify, they'll get additional benefits on top of everything. That's really amazing. And that's uh, free. So, but if you don't do it, that's a costly mistake because you don't <laughs> want to not lose that opportunity. So that's I'll, a good thing. I'll have thing. to see if my aunt, my mom's youngest sibling, if she's aware of that, because um, she took care of my grandmother who had vascular dementia and they lived on grandma's social security, so it doesn't take too many brain cells popping together to figure out that when my grandmother died, my aunt became, you know, without an income. So I know she's in uh, subsidized senior housing and I don't know what all else. So I'm hoping my, her, my mom was the oldest of four. So the younger of the two brothers is very smart. And I would hope that he is he has learned that so that he could pass it on to his sister, but I will make sure because that's, that's something she shouldn't, um, she shouldn't miss out on. <laughs> yeah, that's important. And, and to understand it, I think another uh, cost of mistake is thinking that uh, Medicare will cover for long-term care. Yeah. No, uh, that's nursing that. homes. <laughs> doesn't do it. But a lot of people think they're under the impression that they'll take care of them. And uh, no, Medicare won't do that, but Medicaid will. Okay. 
So, but in order to qualify that, they'd have to spend down their assets to qualify for Medicaid. And if they do that and their nursing home is um, being paid for by Medicaid, if they own a house or whatever property they own, at the end upon their demise, they must sell the house to pay off that expense to Medicaid. So if the children are thinking they're going to get the house after grandma's, you know, been in a nursing over 10 years, good luck. Yeah. Because that's not going to happen. But um, again, speak to an attorney. They may be able to devise a method in order to uh, prevent that from happening. Uh, they may have options available, uh, a certain trust that may be set up. So again, speak to someone who helps uh, understand the elder law attorneys are good to uh, Which, understand the options. I did have an episode specifically on that topic that came out on April 25th, I believe. So we can, I'll link that in the show notes as well. So you can go back to that one. So that way you can kind of put all these great advice together. So. Yeah. Well, that's what it is. It's, it's a team effort. You know, you have to have experts in all areas that could help. If you have a loved one who's going to a nursing home to understand what the ramifications are associated with, you know, the cost associated with that, but always good to, you know, take it in advance. You know, some people get long-term care insurance in order to cover that aspect of it. You know, the time to get that actually is now, I think, while you're in your 50s, because that's when it's most affordable. Uh, and because uh, nursing homes on the average, anywhere from $250, $300 a day, maybe even more in your area. And that's uh, something that could be expensive. Someone get Alzheimer's disease. I mean, you're looking at 10, 15 years of treatment. That could be substantial, you know, so you have a way to cover that cost, you know, look at options, you know, um, you know, we offer these plans and people are surprised how affordable it is. So that's something to do, but the more you wait, the more expensive it gets. So that is is anything that's all about, you know, um, reducing your risk in that situation. So that's important. So my mom was in memory care for three years. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was $5,600 a month. In March of 2020, she fell and broke her leg. So the rent and the care fees were going to go up to 7200 starting April 1st, 2020. And my mom said, mm, nope, we got this COVID thing. And I, my leg is, you know, now she was going to be wheelchair bound, which is prior she had was completely ambulatory with no aids. Right. And I, I swear she had a moment of clarity and said, I don't know about this COVID thing. We're not going to be able to go out to the park and watch kids. I'm going to be in a wheelchair. My fees are going up. Yeah, I'm tapping out because she died March 31st. Oh, sorry <laughs> and she, uh, she she robbed them of that additional money. But back at tax time, a lot of people on Instagram were sharing the the yearly cost of what they were paying out of pocket for care. And so I thought, okay, I know, I know what you guys are trying to point out, but I'm just going to point out that it was almost $250,000 for those three years. Mm-hmm. just for the memory care, but it was cheaper than the 24 hour a day in home caregivers we had while my dad was on hospice. That was more like uh-huh. $700 a day in 2017. I cannot imagine yeah. what it is now. And yeah. you want to talk about bleeding money. $700 a day is bleeding money. <laughs> yeah, was, it is a lot. Wow. Yeah. I, was... I can't remember if it was 43,000 or f- I think it was for about 43,000 for the two ish uh-huh. months, two and a half months he was on um, yeah. hospice. So yeah, okay. that, that's a lot of money. And then you, we did memory care after that for three years. So yeah, it's, we, I'm, I'm always preaching. You got to plan ahead. You got, you know, and one of the things I was going to point out is a lot, of, I think a lot of people hesitate to contact lawyers and other experts like yourself because they think, Oh my God, it's just like, you know, nobody wants to call a lawyer. Cause that's just like, that's kind of almost bleeding money, but it can well, save you a lot of yeah, but yeah, it can save expensive. you a lot of money. And yeah, it saves obviously- you money in the long run. And, and my services are free. You know, I get compensated by the insurance carriers. So that's great. So they have the ability to talk to me about their questions. I'm not billed by the hour. You know, and like maybe a financial planner or someone else who may regard my services are free. Uh, and, you know, that's a good thing. And we can help them to understand what uh, possibilities they have depending on their situation, you know, what best plan is suited for them. So they're free and no, no cost, no obligation, which is great. So that's, there's no reason not to do it. You know, and you don't cost, it doesn't cost extra if you apply with coverages because the companies that I work with 
or the same as you would work with um, individually. But a lot of people t- attempt to try to do it on their own, and they're just like really not doing themselves an advantage. It's just like, um, how do you call it, you know, like self-diagnosing yourself, <laughs> and you really just can end up with a worse situation. And that's really sometimes people try to do it on their own. And uh, if you can get the services done for free, take advantage of someone who's an expert who's been doing it. I've been doing it since 86, so I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so um, and I'm doing it before Advantage Plans even came about. And um, it was really a game changer when it came out in 2006. And uh, it's really made a difference in a lot of people's lives because they're getting more quality care. They're getting extra benefits. And that's something that um, in the long run, it's going to be a big a big plus, you know, just think about it. I mean, I had a client who literally lost all of her teeth, you know, mm. and when she didn't realize the plan was offering a plan to replace that teeth with dentures, she was thrilled. I mean, she couldn't believe that a company would pay that. She says, yes, there are companies out here that will cover the cost, usually up to 5000 you know, but, and depending on their income, sometimes if they're low income, they may cover the full amount of dentures. Dentures are expensive, 10000 15000 20000 not uncommon. Oh for Lord, a full set of teeth. <laughs> yeah. And if you're on a fixed income, that could be substantial. But there are companies available that will cover that. Even the government will step in if they qualify for Medicaid. They will come and cover the cost. And that is a game changer. Just imagine, you know, eating, you know, food and just what you do, activity. And you, you forget that how, how important that is, you know, as part of your health. So it, it, it goes beyond just the standard hospital and doctors, a lot more features available and people need to be aware of that so that's why i'm here to help so hopefully we'll get a chance to you know read the book check out the videos you know and make informed choices that's what it's all about yep unfortunately we do have to be our own best advocates but we do have you know people to help us like yourself and like we mentioned elder elder law attorneys that's not rolling off the tongue so what is the title of your book um yeah it's virtual medicare 10 costly mistakes you can afford to make. It's available on Amazon as well as other fine retailers. It's available in uh, ebook form, print. Uh, we have soft cover, hard cover. You've got an audiobook form. We even got it in Spanish for those speaking <laughs> Spanish, a Spanish version. So, and uh, of course, they can go to uh, the website, really easy, medicare.com, or check out the videos on YouTube, TikTok, uh, Facebook as well. So, you know, just here to educate people and help them uh, understand what options are available and hopefully they can make a informed choice that's really what it's all about so well, awesome. i like to tell people so it's been a little more than three years since my mom passed away and i am still learning all kinds of great things and this one was you know i learned stuff today that i didn't know which i got eight and a half years before i got to make this decision so i'm sure things will change between now and then but at least now i know that there's penalties and don't don't you know don't procrastinate on making your choice because if you hit 66 you're you're going to kick yourself, and especially if you have a health issue. So, the, you know, I always love it when I learn something because I, I talk to so many people that, you know, you'd think that I'd, I'd know it all by now, but I certainly don't. <laughs> no, no one, I can say, claims that. But um, as with anything, it's a team effort, you know, when you're looking at this. You know, you have an attorney, you have an accountant, you, you know, you have a specialist, you know, and that's really what it's all about. When you're, uh, you know, putting a book together, you have editors, you have um you know, people who do the covers, uh, same thing with a movie, same thing when it comes to your health. When it comes to Medicare, it's a team effort. You know, you have to work with the best people that you surround yourself with, whether it's an accountant or an attorney to help you, depending on your situation, everybody's different, you know, but that's really what it is. Doing it on your own, it's like, you know, going to court and being your own <laughs> own advocate. That's not a way to do it, okay? That's why what you learn from your program is that you need to reach out to the experts who know what they're doing and help you make choices that really are in your best interest. And that's the way to go. That's in life. You will find you'll, you'll, you'll do better with everything when you have uh, a team working with you. And that's really what it's all about. So, and uh, well, we know awesome. how important teams are in caregiving. So obviously we just need teams all the time. So I really appreciate this. You definitely want to check out, um, real easy Medicare's YouTube channel, which I will link in the show notes. So you can do that because there's probably more questions you guys have and I'm trying not to make these things an hour and a half long. (laughs) So I appreciate it, Al. And welcome. um, Glad to be here. Awesome. Glad to help. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your podcasts.